So video footage has just been released showing misconduct by a notorious former sheriff in Clayton County, Georgia. What were you doing in Clayton County that day? Is, is it a democracy, sir? It's the United States? No, it's not. Not in my county. Sir, I'm asking you a third time. Oh. You ain't gonna ask me, Jack. You're gonna sit in this chair. Am I entitled to a friend's speedy trial? You're entitled to sit in this chair, and you're entitled to get the hell out of my county and don't come back. That's what you're entitled to. You sound like a damn jack. That footage resulted in his conviction for federal civil rights violations, for which he is about to face sentencing here this week. In other words, here's yet another rare, but great example of law enforcement being held accountable for civil rights violations in the best possible way. Criminal prosecution. When a police officer straps somebody into a restraint chair unnecessarily, just to send a message or for any other improper purpose, what constitutional rights are violated? I'll tell you. The victim's right to be free from seizure without probable cause under the Fourth Amendment, as well as his rights under the Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment to be free from arrest without probable cause. The former sheriff of Clayton County, Georgia, was charged with seven counts of willfully depriving detainees at the Clayton County Jail of their constitutional right to be free from unreasonable force by law enforcement officers. Specifically, the grand jury who indicted him alleged that Hill caused the seven victims to be strapped into restraint chairs at the jail without any legitimate, non-punitive governmental purpose. The grand jury further alleged that these offenses caused physical pain and resulted in bodily injury to the victims. So now the trial is over. On October 26th of 2022, a jury convicted former Sheriff Hill on six of the seven counts against him. As to each of those six guilty counts, the jury further found that the offense caused physical pain and resulted in bodily injury to the six different victims. The reason that you're seeing this now is because some of that footage was just released. The released footage shows the restraint of Robert Arnold, who was booked into the jail on February 25th of 2020. He was accused of assaulting two women inside a Forest Park grocery store earlier that month. What was you doing in the Clayton County that day, Sheriff Hill asked Arnold. It's a democracy, sir. It's the United States, Arnold replied. No, it's not. Not in my county, responded Sheriff Hill. What were you doing in Clayton County that day? It's, it's a democracy, sir. It's the United States. No, it's not. Not in my county. And when Arnold challenged Sheriff Hill on his right to a fair and speedy trial, Hill told Sheriff's Office employees to bring him a restraint chair. Roll that chair around here, ordered Sheriff Hill. Roll that chair around here. Yes, Am I entitled yes, to a yes, fair and speedy yes, trial? Yes, Sheriff Hill, Roll that chair around here. Roll that chair around here. You stay out of Clayton County. You understand me? Yes, sir. You sound like a jack. Sir, I'm asking you a third time. Oh. You ain't gonna ask me, Jack. You gonna sit in this chair? Am I entitled to a free and speedy trial? You entitled to sit in this chair, and you are entitled to get the hell out of my county and don't come back. That's what you're entitled to. You sound like a damn jack. According to a 2018 policy approved by Sheriff Hill, restraint chairs may be used by security staff to provide safe containment of an inmate exhibiting violent or uncontrollable behavior and to prevent self-injury, injury to others, or property damage when other control techniques are not effective. This evidence was presented at Hill's criminal trial in federal court. Now, the video showed that Arnold was being cooperative during the time that Sheriff Hill questioned him. Hill's defense team at trial argued that the sheriff's knowledge of Arnold and other detainees' actions prior to their arrests made use of the race restraint chair justified. Prosecutors also introduced surveillance videos from inside the jail that showed sheriff's, Sheriff Hill's interactions with another guy named Glenn Howell on April 27th of 2020. Howell, a landscaper, had a dispute with the Clayton County Sheriff's Office deputy about payment for work that Howell did on the deputy's property. Sheriff Hill called Howell to try to intervene, and the conversation became heated. When Howell tried to contact Hill again, Hill obtained a warrant for Howell's arrest on a charge of harassing communications. Howell turned himself in a few days later. Now, in the surveillance video, Howell is pictured sitting on a bench for several minutes. He appears to follow commands as an intake officer searches him and processes his belongings. At one point, prosecutors pointed out jail staff left Howell alone in the intake area, something attorneys argued that they would not have done had Howell been a threat. Footage shows Sheriff Hill arriving about an hour later and speaking to Howell in the hallway. Less than a minute into the conversation, Howell is placed into a waiting restraint chair. This is the restraint chair photo that was used at trial, showing what Sheriff Hill was using. The Sheriff's Office restraint chair policy explains that officers should remove someone from the device when they have determined that there is no longer a threat to self or others, or the inmate must be transported to another facility. Multiple witnesses, however, testified that when Sheriff Hill ordered someone into a restraint chair, it was understood that that person was not to be released for four hours, the maximum allowed under the policy. 
Sheriff Hill took the stand in his own defense and testified that he stood by his decisions to restrain the detainees, telling jurors he acted lawfully. Apparently that didn't work out too well for him. So, the constitutional rights at issue for all these charges, again, were the victim's right to be free from seizure without probable cause in violation of the Fourth Amendment, as well as his rights under the Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment to be free from arrest without probable cause. Sheriff Hill was allowed to retire in November of 2022. He's currently receiving a monthly pension of $8,159 from Clayton County, during his retirement. So in late November, his police officer certification was revoked by Georgia's Peace Officer Standards and Training Council, or as they call it, POST. Now, former Sheriff Hill is set to be sentenced on March 14th, here this week. He faces up to 10 years in prison, according to federal sentencing guidelines. Now, I looked it up on PACER. The government is, in fact, recommending 46 months. Imagine, Everything this notorious sheriff has done, and it was just a couple short clips of footage that got him indicted and convicted. It goes to show how important it is to obtain video footage so as to avoid a his word versus mine scenario. It also goes to show the power of multiple complaining victims. Everyone knows that where there's smoke, there's fire. Once complaints get a certain amount of momentum, it gets extremely difficult for even the most corrupt law enforcement officials to avoid accountability. We also once again see how how important it is that we be able to turn to the federal government to complain about corruption and misconduct by state and local law enforcement. Sure, it happens at the federal level too, but that's one of the legitimate roles of the federal government, enforcing federal constitutional protections from state and local government abuses. Civil lawsuits can only do so much because, by definition, government generally doesn't care about wasting your taxpayer money. But they do care about political consequences, and they really, really fear federal prosecution. I have little doubt that similar things are still occurring across the country. The absolute best thing that you can do is share the news of this former sheriff's fate far and wide, so that all the others and the future tyrants in training can see what awaits them if they act in the same way. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you love the Constitution. If you're a police officer, you're also welcome. That's a joke, by the way. I actually received lots of private support from police officers as well as retired police officers. Most of the time, that is private because retaliation is real. As you can see illustrated very well with what's currently going on with the West Virginia State Police, oftentimes any police officer who reports another police officer for misconduct gets blacklisted as not being a team player and ultimately will face consequences. So that's why our number one priority should be developing and maintaining a consistent and effective method of professional accountability for police officers. But more on that later. So remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it.